Hey you guys, what is up? My name is Charlie. Welcome to my channel. It is National Coming Out Day, so I thought we need to celebrate. Good shit. I love shit. I also want to share my story with you guys. How I came out. How it was the most magical thing since Harry Potter. That's not true at all. Let's get into it. <laughs> the first thing people always ask me is, did I know? Uh, yes. Kind of. I know when I was younger, I really enjoyed seeing other boys naked. I like got butterflies in my stomach seeing other guys undress. So like in locker rooms, it was just an erotic experience. And I know that I had like really, really close friendships with other guys that sometimes felt like mildly romantic, but I never identified with the word gay because gay was a really scary term. People used it as a slur. People were super homophobic when I was a kid. I mean, people still are through junior high and high school. I had girlfriends. I think I had like three in my life and I was sexual with them. I didn't ever have sex. I've never had vaginal penile sex ever. <laughs> I have made out with a girl <laughs> and uh, done other stuff. I feel really hot right now. I'm sorry, actor on set, someone needs a powder as ass. I need the powder pronto. Okay, moving on. The moment I realized I was gay was when I was reaching down for my hair dryer and as I'm reaching for it, I'm like, oh, I'm gay. It had nothing to do with the hair dryer. It was all me realizing like, this isn't going away. I'm gonna deal with these feelings for the rest of my life. I'm gonna stop fighting this because holy crap, that's just that's just what it is. I'm gay. And it was just, it was a totally ordinary moment. Again, nothing to do with the hair dryer. It wasn't like I was reaching for the hair dryer and I'm like, oh, Charlie, who are you kidding? It wasn't like that at all. It was just a moment. Fast forward six months and I started locking eyes with a guy. We started texting. He was part of a theater department, which I was a part of. I was the lead in the musical. And one night, we ended up texting, it was like 10 o'clock and I was watching Ponyo and I really wanted to ask him if he wanted to check things out. It wasn't until four in the morning. I got around to the question, I was like, would you want to experiment with a guy? And he said, maybe. Fast forward a week probably and we were outside my house in his car and eventually we got around to holding hands and it was like super electrifying and weird. I think the conversation happened like, do you want to kiss? And I was like, oh, I think that might be fun. Okay, yeah, like maybe, okay, maybe we could try that. And we lean in for it and there was that moment right before and I was like, oh my God, I'm about to touch this guy's lips with my own. The universe may explode. Be careful. I failed chemistry. And we touched lips and it wasn't a moment like you'd think where it was like, oh, I've been missing this. This is the one I've been waiting for. It was more like, oh, this is weird. Oh God, what is that? Facial hair. Oh my God. We eventually started like making out and like, and I just remember thinking like, this is so weird, but I like it. I didn't know what was happening. It was very euphoric and shameful all at the same time. Sad, but beautiful. I think I left the garage door open and my sister walked out of the garage and <laughs> comes out and sees the car and we're kissing and immediately we stop and we're like, holy crap, did she see anything? And I get out of the car and I'm like, hey, what's up? Two in the morning. <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm hanging out in this car outside our house. What are you doing? She's like, are you gonna come inside? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. One second. And he was freaking out and I was like, I don't like, I don't think she saw anything. I don't think she saw anything. She saw something for sure. But the next morning, my mom came up to me and she had told my mom. I came in my room, I think I was playing piano and she's like, oh, thank God. It was really hard coming out and not really being on my own terms. And that's why you really shouldn't make other people come out. People will do it on their own accord. Coming out is a privilege and a lot of people can't do it because of safety, because of financial reasons, because of family, there's so many reasons. And so like a year after this, I finally started telling friends and I made it Facebook official. I put it on Facebook. I said, interested in men and I clicked save changes. And I haven't looked back since. But you know something really funny? When I was a freshman in high school, one of my friends came up to me when I was dating a girl and I had a girlfriend and she was like, Charlie, you know your profile says interested in men, right? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Holy sh I had to go home and change that. But I was like, oh my god, how did it know? Facebook gods. Ah! The message I want to say is that it wasn't a good experience for me. Most media portrayals of coming out, like, make it a really awesome, beautiful, perfect thing where, like, you come out and then life's perfect. That's not all how it was. I was dealing with incredible depression. I was suicidal throughout this time. I was fighting so hard to love myself. 
I've read so many self-help books, I could have had a self-help library, and I still didn't feel good. Finding out who you are and who you love in a world that's insanely transphobic and homophobic and racist and sexist and queerphobic is super hard. It is not easy. And the process of publicly identifying as queer does not define you. Like the closet paradigm just reinforces cis, straight, heteronormativity, and it's not cool. So instead, I would like to give you permission to meet yourself where you're at on your journey that only you can take and love yourself there. Cause I love and adore you. Oh, and happy I love yourself to pieces day. And don't forget to subscribe, comment, like. I love you so much and I'll see you at my next video. I just wonder if they have more flavors than sea salt. That's all I'm asking for. Oh my god, someone saved that man from that burning building! Superman's busy. Are we rolling? Oh, I forgot. I'm the only one here. Clark, I'm gonna have to put you on a keto diet. That means no more chips. Oh, you're f***ing kidding me, right? Superman needs his carbs. Clark, by our estimates, you are eating about 200 pounds of potatoes a day. I'm sorry, I think you're missing something called water weight. I carry my weight in my muscles. 